Because when you subsidize, people will continue buying more and more and more and more. What most people hoped to be an answer to their immediate challenges due to the prevailing global inflation turned out to be a call for national realignment to achieve middle and long-term goals that put the country in a better position to address similar economic challenges. It's tempting to compare to do what other countries are doing, but as we say in matters of the economy, in matters of crisis and situations like this, each person must look at their resources because you don't want something that you cannot sustain. You don't want to start on something or, revo or revoke something that you should have kept along. But in moments like this, they require adjustment. Now, unfortunately, quite a number of people want to maintain the status quo. So they want the president to speak to them in a way that will restore the equilibrium they had. Those days are gone. We all have to move to the next uh, level of adjustment. But that painful process of adjustment, we must face it. In his speech, the president made it clear that he is against price caps and subsidies, saying that these measures risk heightening the inflation further. So the president is right to say we cannot put um, any price caps because price caps will allow people to consume more than what is available in the market. The price increases sometimes are trying to regulate the supply and the demand. Now the moment you disrupt that process, you are going to have demand exceeding the supply. Now, at the end of the day, you end up with a much higher price than you would have had if you had let the market sort out uh, that option. Early this year, before inflation hiked, Ugandan motorists were consuming an average of 6.5 million litres of fuel a day. Dr. Fred Muhumuza asserts that such consumption rate, despite the hiked price, primarily supports revenue collection and in turn backs government planning, but a national reservoir shouldn't be looked at as a measure for affordable fuel in the future. Oil reserves literally address structural breaks in uh, the supply chain. That you have a disruption, right? the pipeline is broken, a railway is broken, a bridge is broken. So you are trying to repair that bridge and it may take you uh, maybe two weeks or three weeks. That is where oil reserves come in. But oil reserves can never be used as a remedy against a price increase. And even if Uganda was to get its own oil, it will still have to play by the international standards of the oil uh, supply system. And our oil is not that much. On the contrary, he notes that it is important for government to prioritize creating more quality jobs to cushion the biting effects of heightened inflation and ease the potential security threats in such times. So I want to believe Ugandans out there have already taken our steps and if there's anybody who hasn't, that person needs to hit the president's message. We need to scale down. It will come to pass, but when it passes, you want to be there to recover. The things we need to readdress as a country is the too much emphasis on manufacturing and industry, driving everything towards manufacturers and industries. They will need a market. And that market has gone only to come from households. A lot of our households are in agriculture. We have not sorted out a number of issues in agriculture. Some of them are in services, but services are also fragile, in a sense. And many of them are driven by government. It's education, it is health, where government has a lot of play. So you want to come back and say, Strengthening households, incomes and livelihoods will ease the security situation, but also has economic benefits. As it stands, the public has been advised to cut back on expenditures that are not directly linked to the basic needs like food, water, shelter and mobility until the situation normalizes. Reporting for UBC News, Wadulomak Arnold in Kampala.